guys, welcome back. Today we're out the range with shotguns again. I know it's becoming kind of epidemic over here at the Military Arms Channel. For the longest time I didn't talk about shotguns and now I'm talking about them all the time. But I brought out something that's from my youth that I want to share with you guys today. And it's a 12 gauge shotgun, but first let's talk about the Mossberg Model 500. The Model 500 pump action shotgun is something that Mossberg has been producing since around 1960 or so, and they continue to produce the shotgun under different variation names uh, all the way up until the present time. In my hands right now, I have a Model uh, 590A1, which is a military police type pump action 500 series shotgun. So back in the 1980s, as a kid growing up, Mossberg produced something that was really out of the ordinary for the time. And that's what I want to show you in the video today. But first, let's start off firing a few rounds out of my 590A1. Then let's break out this blast from the past and take a look at it here really quick. Yep, pump action shotguns. There's an American as baseball and apple pie. Let's check out this Model 500 in a special chassis. <laughs> uh. Fun, 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 fun. This is a Mossberg Model 500 in a patent pending <laughs> bullpup stock. And this is a gun that wound up being fairly popular with Hollywood back when I was a kid in the 80s. Uh, this shotgun came about around 83 or 84. Mossberg doesn't keep real, real detailed records of their manufacturing, um, but you can try to contact them and ask what year your firearm was made based on serial number, and they may or may not have information. A lot of gun companies like Colt keep meticulous records, and some companies like Mossberg don't. So sometimes it could be hard dating some of their products, especially their Model 500 series of shotguns. But based on the configuration of this gun, we know it's a Model 500 and not a later Model 590, which would have also been used in this bullpup chassis, probably um, in the late 80s, probably going into the 90s, because production of these stopped, I believe, right around 1995. This one, again, is an earlier model. It's a 500, and it's an all-plastic chassis, and all they've done is taken a standard shotgun, taken the stock off of it, and sat it into a two-piece plastic chassis. Then they've run linkage back to an existing trigger. The trigger's in here and the safety and everything. It's really just a complete shotgun sat into this two half, uh, two pieces of plastic, I should say, and then screwed together. So it's really kind of a, kind of a chintzy job, if you ask me. It's very, very awkward. It has two grips on it. So you have your main pistol grip back here with the grip safety, and then you have a vertical grip here in the front, but you'll notice there's texturing and hand stops front and back because this is held on by a screw. And when I was younger, my buddy had one of these and he took the vertical foreign grip off and I remember shooting it uh, you know, just like this without the vertical grip. Later shotguns, they had other configurations of this. I've seen them with 20 inch barrels and they hold eight plus one. So you'll see these in different types of configurations. The sights on them are very, very crude and rudimentary. You have a polymer brick up here in the front and then you have a metal sight that's held in by two screws and it's a v-notch in the rear and it's a very coarse sighting system it's definitely made for a right-handed shooter and it warns you not to use left-handed uh, it says shoot from right shoulder only store gun and ammunition separately and patent pending in a big billboard marking on the side of the shotgun have a case deflector here for the shooter's face so nothing will come up and hit you while you're shooting it right-handed has a nice thick recoil buffer here and it's just an awkward 80s gun <laughs> let's do a little bit of shooting with it and we'll go over in a little bit more detail get some close-up shots of the gun itself so you guys can uh, check it out in this plastic carrying handle <laughs> has a cross block safety right here in the front and really goofy sights All right, so you can see how the gun runs. Very, very interesting. Nice smoke coming out of the barrel there. That was just some Federal bird shot. That's what we're running out here today is a little bit of bird shot from our friends over at Federal. They do supply ammunition to the channel for free, so we'd like to thank them for doing that. Um, yeah, so anyway, let's do some more shooting with this old dog <laughs> and kind of go over in detail some of the features of the gun. Here, hopefully the sunlight is such that you can get an idea of what the gun looks like. 
So as I mentioned in the opening of the video, it's simply two pieces of polymer sandwiched or clamshelled together around a 500 shotgun. This one is an earlier model. We can tell that because it's in a chassis, we can't get a good look at the receiver. There's a number of different changes between the 500 and the 590, but the most conspicuous of them would be what we can see without taking the gun out of its a chassis, and that's how the magazine tube is affixed to the barrel here. It's designed to stop right here at this lug and has a set screw that holds it in place. The 590, one of the features of that improved version of the 500 is that the magazine passes through a, a ring and is open on the end so you can put extensions on it. Here you can see the heat shield, which has been a standard feature on some of the 500s back in the day. So that, that remained. And then to that, they've affixed this plastic carrying handle. It's polymer, probably not truly plastic. And then you kind of see those sights in there that I was talking about at the opening of the video. This front blade is really, really thick. The whole gun is really wide. The grip feels wide. If you take a look at that, you can, get an, uh, you can get an idea about how wide this gun is. It's just a very porky shotgun overall. The ergonomics are actually fairly good. It pumps nice and smooth. And if you want something from the 80s that was quite popular in the old action movies, you can pick one of these up off Gun Broker. Uh, before we came out and filmed, I think I saw one available on Gun Broker and they wanted some, something like 800 bucks for it. So they've gone up quite a bit in price because really it's only about a $300 shotgun. If you're wondering how to release the action on this gun when the pump is closed, the action's closed, you'll see this cutout here. And you can see a little bit of the receiver. But this allows you to stick your finger in there and hit the bolt release so you can open the action. It's in a very clumsy spot. Also on the side, you can see that roll mark I was talking about where it tells you to shoot from the right shoulder only. And then we have that patent pending. I kind of was jokingly uh, posting on Instagram pictures of this gun before we filmed it. And I said, I wonder if they got their patent. It was kind of a joke. The bullpup became a thing, obviously, uh, in the 2000s. And this is really a, a gaudy attempt at, at, at a conversion. But keep in mind, the conversions were becoming popular in the 90s. You saw bullpup chassis popping up for all sorts of different guns. I saw them in SKSs and AKs. The Chinese even imported AKs in bullpup configurations that were just rifles where they just basically put a metal butt plate on the end of the receiver and um, we actually did a video on one of them, one of those Chinese AKs that's a bullpup. So it was something that was coming of age in the late 80s, 80s and early 90s. And this made it till about 1995. And probably because of waning sales, they stopped the production of it then, 1995. And now they're collectibles. But yeah, if you want to load this guy up, it's a little bit awkward. Loading, it's fairly natural, but you can see if I'm holding the pistol grip, my arm is right in the way of getting to the, the loading section. So I kind of have to break my grip to gain access to the magazine tube. Got five in there and I can put one in the chamber. But now to ready the weapon, the release for the bolts back here. So if this hand's here, you release the bolt, you have nothing up here to pull on the front grip to open the action. If you hold the muzzle of the weapon up, push the release, that handle will just drop free barely. And now you can ready the weapon to fire. The cross block safety is right here. Red lets you know it's on fire that's safe and all that's doing is locking this plastic trigger which is connected to a metal bar coming back here and actually interacting with the physical trigger that you would have on a regular 500 series shotgun. All right, let's do some more shooting. Run these five rounds out of here. All right, as you can see, the action's really smooth. I've ran into some older 500s that are a little bit gritty. Obviously, this one's had seen a few rounds put through it, but um, overall, the ergonomics are actually kind of good. The gun feels and points nicely. The sights are awful, but we're hitting a man-sized target at 15 yards or so very easily with it. But yeah, now if I want to unlock this, I have to hold the muzzle up, stick my finger in there, release it, and pump it.
if you're going to clean this thing, which you probably should, you're going to find it a little bit more difficult than your standard 500 or 590 because of the chassis that it's in. I do not recommend taking the chassis apart. Jason attempted it with his and parts just fall out of the chassis and it becomes very difficult to put it back together. About the most I would recommend is taking the barrel out of the action and trying to clean it through the ejection port as best as you can. Because if you take it out of this chassis, you're in for a headache. I'm not saying you can't get it back together, but it's going to be, it's challenging, let's say that. Now, the next question I know that's on your minds, it's an 80s shotgun, how does it 80s hip fire? Well, let's find out. <laughs> I short stroked it once. <laughs> the recoil's weird. Holding it down here without in your shoulder, it really bites into the palm of your hand. You can see it turned my hand a little bit red. It's taking that full blast on the pistol grip. <laughs> yeah, that's wild, man. Definitely tuck it in tight. Weird. Still like it, though. How can you not like it? It's an 80 shotgun. Optics back in the late 80s, even the early 90s, really weren't much of a thing yet in terms of red dot sights. So this gun is not set up to accept any type of aiming device other than the really, really crude sights that it ships with. But still, it's a lot of fun to shoot. One thing I wanna show you guys is that the grip safety on this thing really does work. So you have this big blocky grip safety here. Now there is a round in the chamber, the safety is off. And if I pull the trigger, I'm putting it on my shoulder just in case it fires. Uh, if I pull the trigger, nothing happens. So that grip safety actually does work. Be funny if it didn't, it's not broken anyway. Now if I grab it, that grip safety feels a little bit weird on the hand. And now this really scrunchy, when you're talking about bad bullpup triggers, this shotgun has it. That linkage inside of here is really, let's just say poorly done because it's a long, gritty, creepy, nasty trigger pull. But still fun to shoot. Yeah, it's fun, trust me. So when you break your 80s firearm out of the safe, you run the very real risk of discovering that a spider has laid eggs in your stock. <laughs> we just noticed that. If they're still in there, they had a very rough afternoon. <laughs> so the bullpup concept, maybe 1980 and the early 1990s, the world wasn't ready for this. And maybe that's the reason why it wasn't, you know, so popular, or maybe it was just a bad conversion. But today the world seems to be ready for bullpups. We live in the age of the AUG, which was a 70s design. And, you know, now we have the Tavors, the X95s, and we have other people bringing bullpup products to market, even bullpup shotguns like the KSG and Bullpups Unlimited makes a chassis system that's even better than this one, if you ask me, for 870s, and they may even make it for 500s and 590s. I'm not sure on that, but I know they make them for the 870s because I have one. And those kits seem to be better than this one. Now, I will say the action on this thing is actually pretty darn smooth. I would say that I've owned two KSGs. My first one had a really rough action, and I short stroke the thing all the time. Uh, this one has a much smoother action, and the only time I've really short stroked it is when I was firing from the hip but when I'm firing from the shoulder, the action is very positive. Uh, same thing for the Bullpups Unlimited stock. I found that uh, once that thing's properly fit to your shotgun, it actually works pretty darn well, and once it breaks in, it's fairly smooth. So anyway, what are these things worth? Like I said, I jumped on Gun Broker before we came out here and saw one for sale starting at 800 bucks, which is kind of shocking given the fact that it's not an $800 gun, but you know, it's a collector's market, what can you do? Guys, if you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. We're 100% viewer supported. We take no money from the industry. We are supported by you guys. So link down below, give it a click and check it out. Another great way to support us is to swing by and pick up a t-shirt from our Forge From Freedom t-shirt store. There is a link to that down below as well. Also check out coppercustom.com, which is our online store as I stumble through this. I haven't done it like a thousand times before. And don't forget guys, we are Twitch gamers. So Follow the link down below, go, go on over to uh, Twitch, 
and follow us there and become a follower and watch us do some streaming. We even play games with some of our Patreons. So if you become a Patreon supporter, shoot me an email, tell me what your gamer tag is and I'll add you as a friend and you can join us in some streams. Guys, thanks for 11 years of support. And now it's time for the last six rounds out of this shotgun and it goes back in the safe for another 30 years. <clears throat>